What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you how to use the SAR indicator so that we create a trailing stop. But in this case, again, it is going to be using the SAR indicator. So for those of you who don't know what is the SAR indicator, it is basically this thing. These dots are the SAR indicator. So basically what we are going to do is that on every new candle, we are going to put the stop loss of the current position in one of these points. So guys, let's go and let's do this. So how do we start? As always, first of all, this is basically my community. In my community, remember that you have exercises and all that that come with my course. Everything in the description, as well as the platform where you can buy and sell bots. Everything in the description. Okay, so let's start. How do we actually make this bot? Let's go here to MT5 and remember, open the IDE. Okay, now we are here in the IDE. Let's click on new, expert advisor, and we are going to give it a name, Emma Sar. Next, next, finish, and okay, check that here, we have the file. Perfect, so what we are going to do now is that we are going to remove everything. This bot, what it's going to do is, as I said, it is going to put the stop loss in the SAR, but it is going to be basically an EMMA bot. We are going to have two EMMAs, and when they cross, we open a position. Okay, so let's do this. First of all, we have to create the inputs, the parameters, which the user has to put. So here, we are going to put input group, and this group is going to be the EMMA. So here we are asking the user to put information about the Emma. So for example, we are going to have two inputs. The first one, the slow input. So for example, here we are going to put slow period. And I don't know, we can put something like 100. And here we are going to put fast period. That's right. And we are going to put something like 10. Okay. These are going to be the periods of the two emmas, the fast one and the slow one. Okay, now we have another input group, which is going to be basically the stop loss and the take profit. So for example, we can create a new group, input group. And here we are going to put, oh my God, let me put here operations. Okay, perfect. And now here, we are going to ask for the stop loss and the take profit. So for example, here, SL, let's put here, I don't know, yeah, I don't know, something like 2000, because we are going to do this, uh, I don't know, <laughs> 2000, and here, TP, let's put, yeah, 100, and let's remove here, one zero. 200 and one zero, and here, let's put 300. It doesn't really matter whatever you put, but yeah, we have here some values. Perfect. So what we are going to actually do right now is to start creating the indicators. Remember that we are going to use an EMMA. So we are going to need two things, the handle and basically an array to store the data of that EMMA. So how do, declare, how do we declare a handle? Remember, it is an int variable. And here we are going to put the following. So for example, we need fast EMMA handle. And we need another one, which is going to be the slow Emma handle. Slow Emma handle. Now we need to declare the arrays where the information is going to be stored. So for example, here we are going to put double fast Emma. We declare an array without a size. And now here we are going to declare, let me write this. Well, declare another array without a defined size. That is perfect. So now remember, we have the data, well, we have the variables where we are going to store all the data related to these indicators. So what we need right now is to initialize all this. Where do we initialize everything? We are going to initialize it in the on init event. Remember that it event, this event can be declared in two ways. You can put here void, so you don't really need to return anything, or you can put here int, so that you return something. Okay, we are going to use int, because in case there is an error, I want to say that, hey, there is an error. So, let's initialize the fast email. First of all, we are going to initialize the handle, 
So remember, we are going to use the IMA function. It is asking us for the symbol. We are going to put here the current symbol. Remember, this is the current symbol. This refers and as the symbol on which the bot is put. Okay, now it is going to ask us about the period. We have the same thing, the current period. And now here it is asking us, well, this was the time frame, and now it is asking us for the period of this moving average. Check that out here. We have declared this. So for example, this is the first one. So we must take the first period. Okay, is there going to be a shift? No. Now, mode, it is going to be the mode Emma, because it is going to be an Emma. And we are going to apply this to the price clause. Perfect. We are going to do something quite similar, but in this case, for the slow Emma. And here, we are going to put slow period mode Emma. And that's it. We have now initialized this, but check this out, guys. We have to check something. I have to say, if fast Emma handle is equal to invalid handle or the slow ema handle is equal to invalid handle there is a problem so we must say that hey error indicators couldn't be loaded so if we are not able to load indicators we cannot put the bot to work so here what we are going to do is that we are going to say return init failed so that the bot stops working Okay, now another thing is that we must adapt these arrays because if we do not adapt them, what we are going to have is that whenever we go to the last candle, the last candle is going to be stored in the last place of the array. And that is quite difficult to access. It is easier if the last candle is in the first element of the array. So we are going to basically do that. And how do we actually adapt the array in, uh, for that? As simple as using array set a series we are going to send the array and here for example we send the fast email and we send the true flag we have to do the exact same thing for the slow email remember the array not the handle check that here i'm not putting the the h and yeah we are ready to go to finish this function what we can do is that we can put here routine return init succeeded that's right perfect so now we have initialized basically the indicator. What we have to do right now is that we need to basically, yeah, <laughs> we need to deinitialize it. So whenever we have uh, this closed, we are going to call on the init, okay, const int reason. And okay, this is another event on which whenever the bot gets closed, we can use this event to uh, close things. So for example, here, we have one handle open. We need to close that handle. We need to release that indicator. So how do we release that indicator? We are going to put, okay, if fast ima h is not invalid handle, this means that we can call indicator release. And we are going to put here the handle. That's right. Okay, we are going to do the exact same thing for the slow email. Indeed, let me take it from here so that we go faster. And okay, we have finished with the on the init function. Okay, what else do we have to do? Okay, now we are going to go to the hard part. We are going to create, well, we are going to use the on tick event. So on every tick, we are going to basically check if we have to open a position. How do we check that? We need to first of all load and store the data in the arrays. How do we do that? We have the function copy buffer. So remember here we have basically the handle. With the handle we have the ability to use this function to basically store the information in these arrays. Okay, so here for example we are going to put fast email h. Now it is asking us for the buffer number. To keep it simple just put here a zero. This is just for, uh, I don't know, for example, here we have the MACD and check that out. The MACD is an indicator, one indicator, but check that here we have two values. We have the MACD, which is the histogram, and here we have the signal. 
Okay, okay. Here you have signal minus 0, 0 0.2. Here we have value, which is the MACD, minus 0, 0 0.1. Yeah, minus 0 0.001. So yeah, if you want to take one value or another, you have to set the buffer number. So for example, to keep it simple, whenever you use an, an emma which just has one value, you just have to put a zero. If you have two values, you have to put zero or one. That's it. <laughs> as simple as that. Okay, now what we are going to do is that it is asking us from which point do we want to start taking data. Since the last candle is always moving, this can give us fake signals. So for this reason, we are going to take from the previews of the last one. So this is done by putting here a one. If you put here a zero, you will take the last one. A one, the previous to the last one. A two, the previous to the previous of the previous of the last one. And so on. Okay. How many do we want? We need to detect crosses. So for this, at least we need two values. So we are going to put here two. And now here, what we are going to do is that we are going to basically put the array where we are going to store the information. Okay. We are going to actually do the exact same thing, but in this case, with the slow one. And guys, we are ready to go. Now it is time to start checking if we have to open a position. So basically, we have to check two things. So for example, here, that we are in a new candle. Okay. Here, we have to check that there is no operation open because there is only going to be one operation open at a time with this bot. Operations. Operation closed. Okay. And for now, this is okay. Let's just start defining these functions. First of all, let's define this new candle function. Here, we are going to actually do this right here. Let me, yeah, put a space here. Okay. Check that here we have the function inside an if. So this must return true or false. So remember that the type that returns true or false is Boolean. So here we have bool new candle and we are going to check if we have a new candle here also we are going to create a variable which call which is going to be called bars which is going to store the current number of bars perfect so now what we have to do is that we check current bars okay and we call bars it is asking us for the current symbol and the current period perfect now we are going to say the following if the number of current bars is different than the number of bars that we have stored, it means that something is wrong, that we are in a new candle. So what we are going to do is that here we are going to update the number of bars, to current bars, and we are going to return true because we are in a new candle. If not, if we do not go inside here, we are going to return false. So here we return false. Okay, now we have to define the other function which checks if the operation is closed or not. So here we are going to put again bool operation closed. And this is super simple. Return position select by ticket. And we are going to put here the trade ticket that I'm going to declare right now. Don't worry. So basically we are sending a trade ticket and we are checking if we can select this. So for example, if this returns true, it means that the ticket can be selected because there is a position opened, but we want to check the opposite if the position is closed. So for this reason, we just have to put here a not gate as simple as, as simple as that. Perfect. So now we have defined these two functions and it is time to start defining the functions that will allow us to check the crosses. So for example, here I'm going to do the following if we are in a buy cross, we are going to open a buy position, else if, if we are in a sell cross, we are going to open a sell position. Check that here we are doing the following logic. If we are in a new candle and there are no operations open, then if we are in a buy cross, we are going to open a buy. If not, well, we check if we are then in a sell cross. And if we are in a sell cross, we are going to open a sell. But let's check how do we create the buy cross and the sell cross functions. It is super simple. Bool, we have here buy cross. 
And here we are going to put the following return. Check that out. To have a buy cross, the fast Emma has to be below at the beginning, but later it has to be above. So to check that, we, what we are going to actually do is that here we are going to say, okay, if fast Emma, the previous value is below the slow Emma, the previous value, and the current value, the last one that we have saved, fast Emma is above the slow Emma, we have a problem. What we are going to actually do here is that we are going to now define the cell cross function and it is the opposite. So for example, here the fast Emma at the beginning has to be above and later it, had to, it has to be below. So here we change that and perfect, we have defined these two functions. Now it is time to start opening positions and for that we have to define this trade ticket variable. You're going to see that is something very simple. So for example, here we're going to put include and we are going to include the trade, trade.mqh. And indeed, let me check if this include is correct because I think it, it is with, yeah, I don't remember, like semicolons. Uh, no, it is correct. I was checking if I had to put here the quotes. So no, I don't have to put, uh, I don't have to put the quotes. Okay, now we are able to define the C trade class. We are going to define an object trade, and here, unsigned long, we are going to create a trade ticket. Perfect. So now we are ready to start opening positions. Here we are going to do the following. Since we have defined the stop loss and the take profit, we are going to do the next thing. So here, we are going to first of all define that whenever we want to buy a buy, whenever we want to open a buy, we need to define when it, well, we need to get the ask. So we are going to put symbol info double current symbol and now I want the symbol ask. But since this can return a lot of decimals and can break basically the operation, I'm going to normalize this to the maximum number of the uh, of digits that the current market has. Perfect. Now we have the ask. So what we have to do right now is that we are going to put trade buy and we are going to open a buy position. So to keep it simple, we are going to put a fixed volume, which is going to be 0 0.1, something like that. The symbol is going to be the current symbol. The price is going to be the ask. And then the stop loss is going to actually be the one we have here, which says that it has to be 200 points below the current price. So here we are going to put ask by sl by the value of a point and here is not by this is less perfect and we have to do the following the same thing for the take profit so here we're going to put tp not sorry i'm going to put ask plus tp by point that's right and here we don't really need to put a comment so we are going to leave this empty now we are going to store the trade ticket and for that, here I'm going to call trade result order. That's right, perfect. Okay, now we have to basically do something quite similar for the sell operation. Okay, here we're going to put bid symbol ask symbol bid. And here, instead of putting buy, we are going to put sell. Okay, we change this to bid, bid, and now the stop loss is above. So we put here a plus and the take profit is below. So we put here a minus. And guys, we have created an Emma bot. Let me compile and check if we have any errors. We do not have errors because we are the best. <laughs> and let's check if it works. And later we will add the SAR thing. So here we have the Emma SAR. Okay, we are in the one hour last month. Okay, perfect. So let's click here on start. And okay it looks as if it is working. Okay, in the next cross here, it's opening the positions. So, okay, it works fine. Now we have to add the SAR indicator. You are going to see that is super, super simple, okay? You can see that another cross there and it opened a position. So, let's add that indicator. How do we actually do that? Remember, we are going to add an indicator, so we need a handle and we need an array to store the information. Int 
and we're going to put here char h and here we're going to put double char which is an array perfect now here i'm going to initialize the handle i char okay current symbol current period and step i don't remember what should i put here okay let's put 0 0.02 and maximum let's put 0 0.2 this depends on you you can put whatever you want here okay now let's check that this is not an invalid handle okay so h if this is an invalid handle it means that we have a problem okay let's also close this indicator if there are issues okay and finally let's load the data so here we're going to put sar h and let me check that here i load the correct data okay perfect we are going to load the information from the very last candle here and here i'm going to put that we are going to take the three last values for example and we are going to store them in the sar perfect so what we have to basically do right now is that we must define a trailing stop function how do we actually do this okay here we are going to define another function and this one doesn't have to return anything so for this we, for, for that we are going to put void that it doesn't return anything so here i'm going to put trailing stop perfect and here i need to basically first of all select the position because we are going to modify it select by ticket we are going to put trade ticket this loads the position in memory so that whenever we want to modify a position it modifies that one the one that we have selected perfect now we need to take data from that position for example we need to first of all take the previous stop loss stop loss let's put here previous sl what else do we need to take we need to take the current price double current price we need to take the open price of that position open price and we need to take the type let's put here type the type of that position because depending on if it is a sell or a buy we have to go up down yeah we will see this in a second and now we have to check the movement of this uh, thing but we will do this later how do we take the previous sl basically the current one at this point so for that we are going to call position get double and we are going to put here position sl here we can also use position get double to take the current price here we have price current that's right and to take the open price we have position get double and we are going to put price open there we had it okay position price open perfect so and now finally to take the type instead of position get double if i'm not wrong is position get integer okay and we are going to work we are going to take the position type perfect guys so now let's basically compute the movement that has been here so for example let's check the movement between the current price and the open price in point so for that we are going to put here double movement and we are going to say okay current price minus open price divided by the value of a point okay depending on whether the position is a buy or a sell this will this will return um, a positive or a negative number so we have to take that into account perfect so now what we are going to say is that we need to basically normalize the data of the SAR. Remember, whenever we want to modify a position or open a position, the stop loss, the price and the take profit has to be uh, taken. Like you have to take care of that thing and you have to take care of that you don't have a lot of decimals. So for this reason, I'm going to put here double and let me check that I'm doing this right. Normalized SAR. And basically i'm going to call the normalize function double normalize double we are going to put here the sar the current one indeed i think that we didn't need so many sars and we are going to put the current number of digits perfect 
So we have to do something similar, but with the previous stop loss. Double, we are going to put here normalized SL, normalized double, and we are going to put here previous SL and the current number of digits. That is right and that is perfect. So what else do we have to do right now? If normalized SL is different, then normalized SAR, it means that the SAR has been moved. So what we are going to do is that we are going to actually, depending on the type of the position, we are going to modify the, the thing, <laughs> yeah, the, the position. We are going to modify that. So here I'm going to put the following. If type is, okay, type is position type by and, okay, check this out, and the current price is above the SAR. So for example, here we are going to put normalized SAR. We have to basically modify this. So to modify this, we are going to use the trade object and we are going to put trade position modify. We are going to send a trade ticket, trade ticket, and we are going to put here the new stop loss. So the new stop loss is the following. We are going to put the SAR zero. And also we are going to remove the take profit. So for example, here we are going to put zero. Look, if you want to keep the take profit, what you can actually do is that here, whenever you open the position, you store the take profit in a variable and then you use that variable here, as simple as that. Okay, let's finish this because the video is getting a little bit longer. Else if type is equal position cell, we are going to check that the current price is below the normalized SAR. And if so, we are going to basically trade position, modify, trade ticket, trade ticket, oh my god, trade ticket, and here we are going to put SAR 0, that's right. And here we remove the take profit. So guys, I think that this is enough. But what we need to do right now is that we have to call the trailing stop function always. Here, we are going to put trailing stop and we are always going to call this. So let's compile and here we have some problems. Undeclared in identifier. Okay, here I forgot the semicolon. Let's compile, okay. Position cell, this is position type. Type cell, compile, okay, now it works. And let's come here and let's check if this is okay. Let me open this. Okay, it is going a little bit fast. Okay, check that out. Okay, let me make this bigger and let me make this slower. And look, look at the uh, stop loss. It is actually moving with the SAR, but indeed it's taking this last value. And I want to take this one. So there may be an issue there. Yeah, and do you remember which is the issue? Remember that I've told you that if you want to access the last element, you have to, if you want to access the first element of the array and at the same time access the last element of the indicator or whatever, you have to use array set a series and I forgot to do that. So here I have to do the exact same thing for the SAR. So let me compile, let me close this, okay. And let's try again. And you're going to see that now it is going to be a little bit different. So check that here. Now we are in the last value. The stop loss is actually with the last value. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you understood how to do this. You can see that yeah, it is super useful. And automatically, as you can see right now, the SAR is moving the stop loss. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that yeah, you liked it, you understood everything. And remember, if you want to buy or sell or sell bots, you can do it by free in the platform that I've created. It is in the description, the bot place. And if you want to learn MQL5, you have my course also in the description in Comaco. So guys, we see each other in the next video.